If you've got one of these, a nice shiny electric car, then sooner or later, you're going to need to use one of these, a rapid charger. If you're really new to the world of electric cars, then these are the fuel pumps of the future and can top up your battery pack up to 30 times quicker than you'll be able to do at home. At electrifying.com, we get asked about rapid charging a lot. How does it work? How much does it cost? How do I pay? There's a lot of questions. So I'm here today at the new GridServe electric highway charging hub at the Motor Rugby Services to explain everything that you need to know about using a rapid charger. Now the first thing we need to point out is that like electric cars, rapid chargers come in different shapes and sizes. Thankfully, they all do the same job though, and you'll find plenty of instructions on how to use them, either on the screens or on the units themselves. Now these charging units here have a maximum output of 350 kilowatts, but any unit with an output of 50 kilowatts or more, it's called a rapid charger. Now do remember that your car will limit the speed at which it can charge, so you won't actually get to fill your battery at that maximum rate. Older cars tend to have a maximum charge rate of 50 kilowatts, whilst the newer ones, well, they can be as high as 225 kilowatts. The golden rule here is that you can only charge at the maximum rate that your car will allow. So check out our battery facts in the Knowledge Hub over at electrifying.com if you need to know more. OK, let's get on with some actual charging. So first of all, we've got to select the right connector. So this Hyundai Kona has what's called a CCS connector, which is what most new electric cars have. If you've got a Nissan Leaf or maybe a Lexus UX300, you're going to need something called a Chadamo connector, which in this case is the blue one. So in this case, I'll take my CCS connector from here, open up my charging flap and plug it in. Now, once you've done that, you're going to need to set up the payment. I wish I could tell you this is the easy bit because in some cases it isn't. A lot of the older rapid chargers need payment to be made by an app, a membership card, or a smartphone web browser. But thankfully, the whole charging industry is adopting contactless payment, and that will hopefully be a thing of the past soon. Now, as I said, this lovely new unit takes contactless cards along with Apple Pay and Google Pay. So you can pay with a card, a phone, even your watch. So all I've got to do is tap my card here, onto the pad, and we're done. If I look back at the screen, it tells me that my card has been accepted and the charging session is about to start. You'll hear a few clinks and clunks as all the safety tests are done, and then we're charging. And one of the things I really like is the dial here that shows you the rate at which the unit is delivering charge into the car. The speed at which your car can charge reduces as the battery gets closer to 80% capacity. Now that's to protect the battery from overheating and it's quite normal so don't panic. You'll find that topping up the final 20% can take quite a long time. So unless you need those extra miles to get home, it's quicker to fill to 80% and just get back on the road. In fact, fill to even less unless you actually need the miles. To finish the charging session with this unit, all I need to do is press the button here. On other charging points, you might be asked to tap your contactless card again or end the session via an app. As soon as the charger has completed its safety checks, and if you listen carefully, you can hear it powering down, I can release the connector, pop it back, and get on my way. And the screen will tell me how much the session has cost me and how much charge has been added. And that's it, we've rapid charged my car. I told you it was simple. And for lots more useful explainers and guides around how to charge your electric car and how to live with one, don't forget to head over to electrifying.com.